Welcome to World Kitchen. Um, my name is Tamara Fatemi Body, and I'm the host of World Kitchen. And today we're going to be making some Vietnamese pho. I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, but my guest chef here can, can say it correctly for you. Um, and as I mentioned in the email I sent out this morning, um, you know, we only have the one restaurant here in town that where we can get um, this dish. So I'm really happy to um, learn how to make it myself because it's, it is a favorite of me and my family. So let me introduce my guest chef. Um, this is Hong Wen. Hello she, everyone. <laughs> she is a visiting Fulbright scholar and um, she's here for just another month or so, but she um, took the time out today to come and help us. And also, as you heard in the, um, or as you saw in the email and in the recipes, um, if you were going to cook along with us, you probably needed to start your broth yesterday or early this morning, because it does take several hours. So we've done that in advance, but she's gonna kind of walk you through how that works as well. Um, so just before we start, I want to thank our sponsor for today, which is the Penn State Outreach and Online Education Office of Equity, uh, Inclusion and Diversity, as always. So we thank them for their sponsorship. And I'm going to let Hong take it away. Thank you so much, Tampa, for introducing me. And thanks, everyone, for being here. It's my great honor to be here to introduce to you one of my favorite dish in Vietnam and the reason why I'm here is uh, and share with you about the dish is the fact that I have been here for a long time and have tried a lot of uh, pho everywhere but still I'm not quite happy because it's not really like Vietnamese uh, dish so I really hope that um, me being here and sharing with you the, re the recipe and the way how to cook uh, in our traditional way may just like uh, give you some ideas of what it's really like. Right, so Hanoi Pho is the dish that I'm going to share with you. So if you come to Vietnam, then you will uh, have a chance to try different versions of pho, whether in the north or in the south of Vietnam. But because I come from Hanoi and I really like the taste of Hanoi Pho, uh, that's what I'm going to share with you is not the uh, sugary sweet uh, pho like uh, you may try it in Ho Chi Minh cities. So um, uh, actually uh, Hanoi pho had a story of its own and um, whenever I eat uh, pho I may think of different versions or different people may tell about different story of pho but uh, possibly this is the story that impressed me the most so I think it might be worth to see a little bit of the Vietnamese country in there so uh, it, to be honest pho is not the dish that is gonna see in traditional a festival or holiday like Tet holiday in Vietnam, but you will see it in everyday life of Vietnamese people. If you go to the street in Hanoi, then every hundred meters you will see a fur restaurant just to see how popular it is. And we eat fur in the morning, we eat fur in uh, for lunch or in the evening. But then I just uh, just to remind that it doesn't have a long history like 4000 years history of Vietnam. Actually, it started quite early in 1910 during the French colon uh, colonialism in Vietnam. So uh, it's a love story between uh, Franco Perry Vicop. I'm sorry if I pronounce his name wrong because it's a French name and I don't speak a French word. And uh, Anne Ba, a Vietnamese ladies. So when when uh, the French uh, soldier came to Vietnam, he needed someone to help him at home. So he employed, he rented uh, An Ba to support him at home. But then there was some love story uh, that went on between them. But um, uh, after a while, then Frank Weiss just sort of, you know, he was thinking about his home country, he misses his home countries, and he really thought of a dish that he that his mother cook and the name of it is port offer and the word port of her, right and even where the word pho is something similar to pho as we know in vietnam so he wanted her to cook for her so she tried a lot of different version and she had to throw away a lot of different versions and finally there was some version that she came up that satisfied him that made him happy even though it's not the same as the port of pho that he had 
back home. Uh, so that is why we have a different version of food that is made by a Vietnamese woman. Uh, thanks to the love between her and her lover coming from French. Later on, the man went back to France and drove back to his family. Unfortunately, he has a wife back home. <laughs> but I'm happy that he went to Vietnam and that we have pho in Hanoi. So that is a love story that is kind of sad for other people because it's like a love affair but for me i'm happy because i have fur <laughs> so um that's briefly about fur in hanoi actually uh you will see a lot of restaurants that have very lovely fur decoration and it's very you know cozy very famous but uh the original original type of eating fur would be on the street as you could see on the screen so it's like the vendors and then it's very you know sort of you feel like it's, uh, it's kind of nostalgic, it's kind of familiar, and it's not something that is very fancy or something that is very cozy. But today that I'm going to share with you a, a version, the home version of pho. So um, just to brief um, a little bit uh, of information about the ingredient that we have uh, shared with you. So these are the key ingredients that I, I would definitely have if I want to prepare the broth. So first of all, an onion that I'm going to grill on the open fire and some of the gingers. So normally I would just pick, uh, I just put about uh, three or four inch of gingers like this one. I'm going to grill it on uh, the open fire. But if you don't have an open fire, definitely you can can use like an oven or an oven or you can even put it on a frying pan but don't put any oil just put it there and then you stir fried it um, so let me share with you how I normally do it I would keep all the peels on and um, uh, afterwards when I have already grilled it then I will take the skin off so let me just uh. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, don't want to burn yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, are you? Yeah. So she's just laying it directly on the grate of the. Um, I over here. Yes. She's just laying it directly on the grate. Oh, oh, that's the camera. Um, sorry. sorry about this. There's no picture. Because oh. it came out, I think. Sorry. Could be a lot of editing in this one. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the camera came unplugged, we think, or something. We're not quite sure. There we, there we go. go. All right. So there she is. She's got it directly on the grate and she's just and I using the open fire. And turning uh, it from time to time to make sure that it's not going to be very burned. So you left the skin on though. So mm -hmm. you're kind of burning the skin yeah, off the, skin the onion. Yeah, normally uh, burned, but then uh, I will take the skin off when it's done. So okay. it shouldn't be a big problem. Right. for now. Same with the ginger, you mm -hmm. left the Same skin the on for for the initial. Mm -hmm. So one is getting a little bit browny, then I think it's done. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we do this would be to make it uh, to make it create a nicer taste uh, and smell in the broth. Even if you don't have um, an open fire like this, uh, you can definitely put it on a frying pan and then it will do the same job, even though it will take a little bit of more time. Can I just turn uh, the cooker off? Turn it off? Yes. Yeah. Just okay. Thank you. Right, thank All you. Right. So here's uh, the cooked onions and the gingers. Now I will just clean the outside and I put in the broth in the, um yeah in the stock right okay so.
Maybe I just have bring it here so it is strong enough and then mess up with that. Uh, so why do we have already real weight? I think of it's easy. better to bring it over here. Okay. It's okay, we can clean it up mm -hmm. later. Right. It's mm -hmm. kind of easy. You just um, use the knife and then you just peel it off. It's kind of easy. And the longer you cook, the easier it is to go up. So we try to get rid of all the skin of this and similar with this. Actually, we have done this yesterday. So I just like to uh, demonstrate how you do it. Yeah, we did make our broth yesterday, as I mentioned, because it takes several hours to cook. So all of this was done yesterday as well. She just wanted to give you an idea of how to roast the the gar or the ginger mm -hmm. and the onion on the open flame. Right. So I have already um, finished with this, and I think that I just put this one uh, into the broth. I'm not going to put the gingers now because actually yesterday we put quite a lot already. So I just put an onion in, which has been uh, grilled and peeled. So let me just put this one in the broth. Okay. Um, so Sarah was saying because she has an electric stove, you would suggest that she just do it in a frying pan, but with yeah. no oil. Yeah, with no oil. So just put it on the frying pan with no oil and a little bit of higher fire. Okay. So um, it will take longer time if it's on the frying pan, but it will do the same job. Okay. So I think I think the whole point is just to um, kind of singe the outer edges mm -hmm. of the vegetables to kind of bring their juices up to to the front so that they're a little um, mm -hmm. so that they give away yeah. more flavor once it's in the in the broth. Right. Yeah. Okay. So as we have reminded all the guests, uh, we have already prepared the broth and we have cooked it for three hours. More and like four, yeah, I think, yeah, yesterday. Four hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you prepare the broth, it's also recommended that you put the raw meat in, half of the raw meat in, and you cook it for like one hour and you take it out. And there is a final product that we have finish right yeah this this one cooked mm -hmm. for a little over an hour in the broth yeah. with the bones right so i normally just take it out cool down and then i just slide into uh thin slices but big size so that is what i'm gonna do now and this was a beef shank mm -hmm. is what we were yeah. able to get um and again for those of you who are local in the state college area we went to um, Far Corners Market on um, College Avenue, uh, and we were able to find the beef shank there in the freezing freezer section. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the other things like the Thai basil we found there, these noodles we found there, um, and she'll she'll talk about the noodles in a bit. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other things, oh, the dried shrimp um, mm -hmm. also, which go in it. We were able to find those there. Now they are. Um, trying to remember that were they in a refrigerated section yeah, yeah they were in a refrigerator yeah, exactly. section at right. park corners uh but actually the dry shrimp is just optional so if you can get access to that it would be good if not then it wouldn't change the taste of mm -hmm. much. so don't bother if you couldn't get the dry shrimp but if you have it then it will create a strong okay. uh, that the vietnamese people like mm -hmm. it may not be the preference of uh, foreigner if you don't really like the shrimp, the fish taste, taste. Yeah, the okay. fish taste. Right. Okay. So um, uh, as I mentioned before, we have already prepared the broth. So now it's time for us to prepare all the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to share with you uh, from step to step how I could uh, just prepare it. Um, I have two chopping board here. One is for the cooked one and the other will be for the raw meat. Okay. So I will start with the cooked meat and then I put it on the uh, plate and mm -hmm. then just, uh, we will use it later on. So uh, in Vietnam, actually we have different types of beef uh, fur, but the one that I prefer the most would be the combination of both the well-cooked and the raw beef. Mm -hmm. So this is the well cooked one. It normally takes about one hour to one hour and a half. The um, tips for you is when you cook it in uh, the broth, you just dip the inside. And if it can go inside easily, it means that it's well cooked already. Mm -hmm. So that's what I normally do. And this one has been cooked uh, yesterday and it should be good. You can keep it for 
a few days and it will not change the taste or uh, the textures of the meat. So uh, this is the shank, so it's kind of easy to slice because it's like it goes in a shape like this and you just slide it in the way uh, that the meat is ordered. Mm. So uh, the thinner, the better, but try not to make it too small. Uh, And you were saying, I, I thought that there was a bone in this, but you're saying it's not. It's more it's of a not, tendon? Yeah, it's a tendon. So uh, the the tendon will make the beef a little bit like tougher. Uh -huh. It's not that that soft, but it's very nice when it goes into the broth. Okay. So the tendon will just shrink a little bit and it creates a very lovely shape of the meat. Oh, okay. But if you don't have uh, the shrine, then you can choose for other type as well. It doesn't change um, very much. Yeah, and just for those of you who may not know what we're talking about, this is the beef shank here. This is the raw one. Um, so it came two in the package. We cooked one and that's how it came out after it had been boiled in the broth. This is the raw one that hasn't had anything done to it yet. And then we have another um, piece of meat here that we're going to also use for the raw beef um, that mm -hmm. she's going to very lightly cook in a few minutes in the broth. I don't think that I'm gonna cut all of them. So just okay. a little bit so that uh, you can have a feeling. So uh, the Vietnamese people really care about decoration. So we don't just put the meat everywhere, but we try to make like sort of uh, decoration, like to make it a shape. Uh, well, if you don't have time, it doesn't matter, just put it in a bunch. But uh, for me, then I care a little bit about uh, the way that it looks. So it like, takes a little bit of time for you just to put it in like uh, a flower shape or um, the shape that you like. I have already washed my hands, so it wouldn't wouldn't be <laughs> unhygienic. So this is uh, the cooked meat and I will use it later on. And because uh, when you put the cooked beef outside in the open air, it tends to get a little bit dark mm -hmm. and dry. So I would like to cover it with the cooling films. Okay. So I in the drop pot. Okay. Okay. Yep. Right. Um, so here are some of uh, the herbs that will go with the broth. And we put it on top of the noodles. So I'm going to share with you how we normally just put it in and then prepare it in advance. So here's an onions. We also have spring onions and we have some corianders. And here you call it cilantro, right? It's cilantro, um, yeah. Some mint and um, uh, Thai basils. I have already washed all of them and that is what I'm going to do with them. Uh, with the onions, it really depends on whether you like to have the taste of some raw onions, but for me, then I would just dip it in the broth later on. But uh, before that, I, I would cut it into two half and slice um, slices, thin one. Okay, so the very thin, almost like mm. a rainbow shape, an arc yeah. there. True. I love rainbows, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple, I hope. So I have a lot of hopes uh, in my beef noodles. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so very thinly sliced. Mm -hmm. Very thin, just like... Um... So there is it. I'm not going to cut all of them. So... Um, Similar to the way that we decorate uh, the beef, I would put it on the side. And they go together, so I don't mix the ingredients mm. just now. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. Then is a spring onion, and even with a spring onion, then I would uh, cut it into two half. One is the green part and one is the white part. Mm -hmm. And this is how I would cut uh, the green part.
very thin as well. So again, I put it on the plate where it should be and not to be mixed with the white onions. Yeah, okay. So it's all about presentation. Yep, <laughs> it's all about presentation, even though it's supposed to be a vendor street um, meat meal. Yeah. Uh, so that is the white part. And with the white part, it's a little bit different in the way that we cut it. So normally we would just use a knife and cut it into half and then we want to cut it this way instead of uh thinned or small pieces mm. so so little straws almost mm -hmm. of, yeah mm -hmm. it's like yeah, a straw yeah. here yeah it's very pretty yeah mm -hmm. and again with this one then i also make it into like a straw like mm -hmm. shape for a lot of people, they don't really like the taste of the onion when it's raw. So uh, it really depends on whether you like it uh, to have a stronger flavor or not. You will decide whether you dip it into the broth later oh, on. Okay. So for a lot of Vietnamese people just love to eat it raw. So we just put it on top of the noodles and we pour the hot water, hot broth on top, on top. and then it will come okay okay for me then i would love it to be cooked a little bit because i couldn't tolerate when it's strong nice. onion. Yeah, yeah it's very strong so here come the cilantro again with all the others um all the other herbs uh, i would cut it into very small pieces so the smaller it is the nicer it will go and you're also chopping the stems up, right? The uh, stem, the, the stem uh, yeah, part? Uh, yeah, I will also chop the stem part. I, I, I really like the stem because to me, that, that is the part where, uh, which has the most flavor. Okay. Mmm, I love this smell. Yeah. Already. Always. It always smells very fresh. Mm -hmm. So fresh. So this is the cilantro again um on one size with the mints a lot of people love it a lot of people don't so it's really up to you i would just leave it the whole leaf like this on top okay um, yep and uh the thai basils again it's gonna be small pieces now, um, Thai basil can be difficult to find here. We did find some at Far Corners, as I said, but if they can't get the Thai basil, is just regular basil okay to use? Mm, well, actually, the Thai basil has a special taste and fragrance. Okay. But I'm not sure if uh, I will substitute it with other basils. In case I don't get the Thai basil, I just get rid of it. I don't okay. really need to have it. You wouldn't it use it. Okay. Yeah, I won't use it. Okay, so it's not really interchangeable mm -hmm. with regular basil. Yeah. Okay. So the reason why I wouldn't put them mixed together is that when we prepare the uh, fur, then we would prepare one bowl by one bowl. Okay. So we just take one of this, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. So if we mix them together, it's kind of hard to get what we really want. So okay. it really depends on who like this or who like that. So it, it fit the taste of um, each individual Person. in the family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So I don't need it anymore. And again, I'm gonna wash this so that I can prepare the raw meat um, okay. on the other plate. So for the Vietnamese fur, it's just the preparation, the chopping thing that takes time and the cooking, the preparation of the broth that takes time. All the other part is kind of fun when you can get together and um, you prepare together when everything is ready. So uh, this is a shank and I would say that the cover of the shank is a little bit hard. So uh, when I prepare the meat, I would just cut the cover away and I, I wouldn't use it. 
So when, if I prepare it from the beginning, then I would just take the skin away and I should put it in the broth mm -hmm. together uh, with the other stuff. So I don't have to throw it away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just the skin. And this part could be a little bit uh, tough as well, mm -hmm. the texture. So again, I would take uh, the top of it and um, again. Right, so in the fat parts, a lot of people like it, but it might not be very healthy. So cutting it away would be a choice. Uh, you also see that there will be some tendon inside, right? Mm -hmm. And it will. But the reason why we chop it into very thin slices is that it will not make it tough. The the meat still come out soft and okay. yeah, tender to you. So again, uh, very thin pieces. So um, you said this was typically Hanoi pho. Mm -hmm. um, are there other proteins that they will use in it or is it always beef? Well, uh, we would use, uh, we ha would have like chicken fur as well, apart uh, from beef fur. Or sometimes we would mix other ingredients. Mm -hmm. But uh, in Hanoi, then typically people don't use like shrimp or scallop like I see here in the mm -hmm. US. So it's just like, um, Beef, just or beef chicken. or chicken. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you're slicing this very, very thin. So when we do dip it in the broth, it will cook very quickly. Yep. Just take literally 20 seconds for it to mm. cook in the broth. Some Vietnamese people, if you go to a Vietnamese restaurant, real, real one, they don't even put it in the broth. They oh. just put it on top of uh, the noodles and then they pour very hot boiling broth on okay. top of it and it turns like a little bit red, but it's not cooked. But the way that I do would be just to cook it a little bit. I, I don't want it to be too raw. Mm -hmm. So the thinner it is and nicer it's going to be like, but we try to make it too, not too, too small. So thin, but medium size. So slice it thin, but slice it all the way across mm, yep. the shank so that it stays in one piece. Yeah. Um, okay, um, Ed is saying that Wegmans in State College has organic Thai basil. Yes, I think I have seen it there um, at some times. Sometimes I can't find it, but yes. So basically, this is a meat that I have prepared. And for the other one, then I just leave it for you to prepare later on. So here uh, is a meat. It's supposed to be like thin, very thin, as you could see. But we try to cut it across uh, the whole meat, so mm -hmm. it's not going to be too small. So this is what I'm going to put in here. Maybe I just call the word. We can use different uh, type of beef. So uh, this one is a shank and um, there is a different type that we we try to get the one that is tenders uh, in Wagman yesterday, but we couldn't find like uh, the tender line that I normally use in Vietnam, so we use it uh, steak instead. But it's still, so this is a sirloin steak. Right? Sirloin steak, yeah. yeah. So it's still okay, I hope. Um, and again, I'm gonna cut it into slight pieces, and I will check whether it's the right way, the right pattern. Yep, it is. So we are we really care about the way that the meat is cut. 
it should be the right um, angle perspective. Mm -hmm. So if we could see different, um, how could you say this one is like it goes yeah. in the So you're going against the grain. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, against the grain, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Again, very thin. The traditional cut of beef uh, is the beef shank, I think is what mm -hmm. you're yeah. asking. Yes, mm -hmm. the shank is the one that she, um, like I said, it come it came with two pieces. I was supposed to put half into the broth as the broth was cooking. That's the, the cooked one that she cut up and made into the flour over here. And then this was the other half that we left raw for today um, that will get just, just very, a few seconds dipped into the broth and it will be not as well cooked, but but cooked enough. Mm -hmm. So I think that's it. Uh, could I get another smaller plate that is white? So this is the raw beef that I have prepared. And again, because they are two different types, I wouldn't mix them together. Uh, normally, if you want to keep the beef as it is, the original, you want to keep the original taste of the beef, I wouldn't put anything, but uh, the pepper goes very nice with it too so i would put some pepper on top of it and mix it together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so let me just um and also some people would prefer to have some slices of ginger on top just for decoration mm. uh, but it really depends on whether you would like to have ginger or not or if you want to have it to have a taste a little bit of uh, bittery taste or not then you put some ginger on so i just put it on top and then we decide if you want to have it uh, or not mm -hmm. Very thin slice. So it's mostly for decoration. Sometimes you want it to have the taste there. Okay, so just a little pepper on the meat mm -hmm. and then the ginger. And then I would mix them. Okay. But not to be mixed together, but just the meat, the different types of meat. Mm -hmm. So keeping the two meats separate, mm -hmm. yep. but mixing up the pepper and the ginger inside. Okay. One tip for making the beef ten more tender is to put a little bit of oil. I don't normally put the oil on because I want just to keep it less fat. Mm -hmm. Right, so these are the ones that we have already prepared. And I think it's now time for us to prepare the broth because basically it's done. Okay. Yes. Um, so we're gonna do the noodles. Yeah, we are gonna do the noodles. And again, um, what? Again, this is um, the style that she bought at um, the Far Corners. It's Oriental style noodles. Bon pho, so it's actually fun noodles. Um, and this is a 16 ounce package. Yep. 
So you see that there will be uh, the instruction behind and it depends on the types of noodles that you buy then you follow the instructions but I have my way of cooking the noodles so normally I just uh, boil the water and then I put the noodle in the water so is boiling. Boil. Yep, the water is boiling now. So it should be boiling like a rapid boil when you put it in. It doesn't need to be like very boiling. Okay. It's just when it starts to boil, okay. then uh, I put the noodle in. Uh, Vietnamese way of cooking is to use chopstick. Uh -huh. So uh, we use chopstick in everything. But we have a chops pair of chopstick here. So when the water is boiling, normally the noodle will just go in. Do you want the camera to come in here? Show them. It's like going to... uh, this part is a little bit small. I should have listened to <laughs> use a bigger pot. But it shouldn't be a big, big problem, I guess. So I leave it uh, cooked in the water for two to three minutes, then I would check the textures of the noodles. Oh yeah, they're already starting to yep. soften a bit, mm -hmm. yeah. So they will uh, go in the water when, this, um, when they get softer. So I would keep it boiling for a few minutes. And uh, when, because you are here, then I think that I would show the, um, I guess, what the broth would look like. So this is the broth. And uh, when, 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 when you prepare the broth yesterday, you cooked it for uh, four to five hours, right? Yes. And um, uh, you have already put the gingers in yeah, and, and the also the onions, onions in uh -huh. and you put also a little bit of salt in. Yes. Uh, my way of cooking is that I always try to test uh, the ingredient to see if it is salty enough. Mm -hmm. So I would try a little bit now to see. So it really depends on how much broth you prepare that you decide how much uh, salt you put in. Mm -hmm. And also it depends on the taste of the family. For some people, they want it to be saltier. Mm -hmm. For others, they want it to be lighter. So you decide by putting little by little and try and see whether it's okay. But normally with the noodles, then later on you will mix it with the rice noodles which is very, you know, tasteless. It doesn't oh, have right. any flavor or any taste. So I want it to be a little bit saltier. To flavor the noodles. To flavor the noodles yes. as well. So I want it to be saltier. Mmm, it's really tasty. Okay, All great. Right. <laughs> well done, Tanda. Oh. Uh, so, I'm gonna wash this to you later on. And you did mention that normally your broth is a little clearer. We're not quite mm -hmm. sure why my broth turned cloudy. Um, if it was the beef bones or the ginger or something made it a little cloudy, but um, so if your broth came comes out a little more clear, that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, Vietnamese people ways of having noodles is to have the broth that look clear, mm -hmm. uh -huh. but the taste is still nice. So this has been cooked for about two to three minutes. And the packet says that you should cook it for from six to seven minutes. Oh. But I just keep it two to three minutes and I would take out a little bit of it and try if it's soft enough. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be too soft or too tough because if it's tough, then the noodle wouldn't be nice. So I think that I tried this one, but it's not quite soft yet. So I keep it for a little bit more. Uh, the reason why you keep it a little bit tougher than the one that you really want is because later on you will put the hot water in and you dip it in uh, the, the noodles. So it will come softer after, uh, after which. Okay, that so that'll right. continue cooking it. Mm -hmm. So it has been boiling for like three minutes, I guess. 
Well, I honestly, when I cook, I don't really follow the instruction that much. I just listen <laughs> to my ancestor telling me. So if he is or she says that is enough, then I think it's enough <laughs> always. So I try uh, looking at it all the time to mm -hmm. make sure that it's not too soft. I think that this is good enough. And the reason why I say that it's good enough is that when I take it off and I cut it, I think that I can cut it with my hands. Oh, okay. Right. You can just pinch it and yeah, it will pinches. it will cut. It, uh, so can you cut it off for me, please? So when this cook one ready, I need to have, how do you call this one? Colander. A colander? Yeah, right. colander. Okay. We call this, um, a sieve a sieve yeah, yeah. A sieve or a so colander i would uh pour the whole thing into the sieve mm -hmm. and i would rinse it with very cold water okay so you want to cool the noodles down quickly mm -hmm. so i have i really have to cook it uh, to wash it to make sure that uh, the, all the powder won't go off so okay. I just put it like this for a while so that it's not going to be hot. Mm -hmm. And then when it's cool enough, then I will wash it in water. So, so you're so, sort of separating them. Mm -hmm. To make sure, that, because when you cook it in the pot and you leave it out, then they will get stick together. Right. So rinsing it this way will help us uh, just to reduce, but not to prevent. Right? Yeah. done i just leave it to rinse, uh to drain a little bit okay here to drain um i think that i still have uh the veggie that i have prepared in the fridge oh, okay So basically, these are the herbs that I have washed together with the one that I prepared for you. And uh, they are basically the same type, but uh, an additional ingredient would be uh, the bean sprout. And the bean sprout actually is optional again. Some people like it, some people don't. So I just put it there and you have the choice of whether you want to put it uh, onto the noodles or not. Mm -hmm. So this is not gonna go into the noodle just yet. Okay. But we leave it on the side and once we have prepared the noodles, then we can eat, we can serve the noodle with these uh, herbs and veggies. Right, and um, as I reminded you, uh, a very important ingredient that needs to go into the broth will be a mixture of um, the ingredients here. We have the fennels. Fennels? It's too small to see, right? I'm not sure whether you can see it. Can you see it? He's going to the overhead. Right. Yes. Okay. So, right. We have a mixture of cinnamon, uh, cardamom, fennel seed, and uh, about two to three star anise. And what I would do is to put in on a pan and I stir fry it a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. And um, when it get a little bit browny, then I would put it into uh, a bag like this and okay. I put it in the broth. Okay. And it stay for like 10 minutes maximum. Okay. We don't want to keep it for too long because if we keep it for too long, then the smell will be very strong. Okay. Uh, but if you think that is a lot of problem, if you have to buy so many different things together like this, then we have another options. So this is uh, the beef flavor for soup base that we bought also from the far corners. Okay. So you can easily get it from uh, the far corner. Just remember the, the name. Uh, it is beef flavor for soup base. Okay. And inside this base, then you will have a bag that is actually the mixtures of all these ingredients. Okay. Right, so we don't really have to have this one and put it in the bag, which is quite inconvenient, but we can use this bag to put okay. it in the broth. 
I see. Yeah, I should have put it in earlier, but because I was like thinking about other thing and then I forgot. So now instead of uh, stir frying this, then I will put uh, put this back in. Okay. Do you think that is fine sure. with you? Yes. So. So uh, we would put it in the broth and keep it for 10 to 15 minutes maximum. We don't leave it for too long because the longer it is in the broth, the stronger the taste mm -hmm. it will be. And some people may not like it that way. So I would keep this one in for 10 minutes. And when uh, we are uh, waiting for it to cook, then I will prepare uh, all the other stuff. Okay. So, as I shared with you before, the Vietnamese noodle would normally be served with some fish sauce. And we would eat out, but put it in the broth. And we prepare a, you know, a small portion on the side. Mm -hmm. And if you think that it's not tasty enough, you want to have some more taste or uh, the fish sauce, then you put it in mm -hmm. with it. So this is what I'm gonna do. takes a little bit of time because this one is um, <laughs> it's a little bit too a little bit more right I have put some uh, fish sauce um, yeah and this one um, is just this is uh, just a version we got at Wegmans it's a Thai kitchen premium fish sauce mm -hmm. and also I have some garlic Vietnamese people love garlic so we put it uh, in the soda as well. Again, thin slices. And uh, we have different types of pepper, hot peppers. It's either yellow or red. So mm -hmm. uh, if you want, then you can easily take the seeds out when you have already sliced it. Not that easy. <laughs> so. Hmm, this one doesn't have a lot of seeds. So your fish sauce is going to be very spicy. Yep. Is a yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's spicy. If you do not fancy very spicy or very hot food, then uh, I recommend you don't put the chilies mm -hmm. or the the hot pepper mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, sauce. So I think um, it might be ready. So. Why don't we, yeah, yep. let's, let me just do okay. those, right. This one as well. Okay. <laughs> Sarah says she wished she could smell this uh, with the Zoom. Yeah, Sarah, there's, with, between all of the fresh herbs and the onions and the garlic and the ginger, it's just an amazing smell, it really is. So, I'm going to prepare uh, the noodle right now. Just to make sure that um, we have drained the noodle. Sometimes I just mix it up. Right, so here are the noodle that we have already prepared and it comes, it doesn't stick together, first mm -hmm. of all. And um, 
you can easily take some uh, or a, a portion of it onto the bowl. Again, I have missed uh, my chopstick. Yeah, I had some uh, other bowls that I was showing Hong earlier saying, oh, we could use these or we could use those. And she said, oh, those are much too big. And I said, OK, so the, the American so, <laughs> serving size is way bigger than what we're what she's used to. So uh, because the Americans ways of uh, our serving size much, much bigger than I normally do, then I would put some more uh, noodle in just to make sure that it doesn't <laughs> look so, so little. So these are some of the noodles. And uh, I might have to take you all to the broth uh, so that we can prepare uh, the other ingredients. Let me go to the front. There we go. Yeah, you can put it on top of that. Just to make sure that this one is well cooked and it has been about 15 minutes already, right? So we can just keep it there for a little bit more and then so this one needs to be on high or fire. Right. So it really needs to be on higher fire. Mm -hmm. As high because, as it can go. Yeah, yeah. As the high as it, it as it could go. Uh so I need to be I have a big, bigger spoon so that I can pour this in. Ladle? Ladle? Ladle, yep. So this is the ladle, right? I would take uh, the boiling broth and put it on top of the soup. And when it's just a soup, the water, then I take it out so that it won't boil again. Oh. That way I can make sure that the soup will be just nice and not too soft or too hot. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I keep it on the side and when I'm doing that, I'm going to prepare uh, the beef. So here are the beef. We have both the uh, Cooked beef and the red beef already. Basically, with uh, the cooked beef, we don't need to put it in um, the broth anymore. We just put some slices on top. Right? And with the red one, now that I'm going to dip it into So you put a little bit of each of the yep a little bit of each and okay. then i will just dip it in for like you see it's already cooked uh -huh. it's very quick so it's like 20 seconds it's not it doesn't need to be to stay for a very long time okay so sarah said she um kind of missed the part where you explained why you put the broth on the noodles and then poured it off again. What was the point of that? All right, I want to make sure that the broth is hot enough. I mean, the noodle is hot together okay. with the broth. Okay. Because if we just pour the hot water in and we don't do anything with that, then it's likely that uh, the soup, the, the noodle will make the broth cooler. Oh, okay. And Vietnamese people ways of eating uh, the noodle is to keep it very hot. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so you're tempering the noodles mm -hmm. a bit to, mm -hmm. to warm them up. Yeah. Right, so here's uh, the herbs that we have prepared in advance. Normally I just uh, put all uh, the bowls in a row and then I do them, uh, I put them together. Uh, some of the basil leaf, some of the corianders, or we call it cilantro, right? Uh, some of the onions, and some of the raw onions. So with the raw onions and uh, 
because I don't really like it to be too strong. So I dip it into water a little bit. Oh, so you'll so slightly temper them also, yep. cook mm -hmm. them just a bit. Just very quickly. And again, on top. To have some more greens. So it really depends if you want to have some green or not, then you decide whether you put a lot of um, onions and herbs in it. And again, so this is all almost cooked, almost done. We just put some uh, broth on top. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the smell is just amazing. Rice is done. So as I said before, it's, it's going to be served uh, with different type of veggie and herbs. Mm -hmm. So uh, we normally serve it like this. Each person will have a portion of noodles, some veggies and, uh, uh, and herbs, and then uh, a portion of fish sauce. And um, our ways of eating the noodle would be to serve, uh, to eat the noodle with the chopsticks and a spoon. So on the side as well, I, I really want to dry this just to make sure that it doesn't look so <laughs> wet. So that, that warm that broth is I, still cooking the meat while yeah. it's in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, the broth is super hot, so it's still cooking the meat. So once uh, we have finished and we leave it there for one or two minutes, then you will see that the meat has already turned mm -hmm. very turn cooked rice and as I shared with you before because we cut it into very thin slices then the meat just shrink mm -hmm. it shrinks and it just give us looks almost like a flower petal or a mm, leaf yeah, yeah exactly so this is already done uh, already cooked uh, Vietnamese noodles and um, uh, another thing that I missed to share with you is that we normally serve it with a little bit of uh, you know what is that I forgot uh lemon oh lime. lemon yeah uh -huh. so i do have yes have a lemon here that i can just right thank you a lot so with a the lemon then we don't cut it this way but the horizontal ways and again we just cut it into half like this so you Okay, making like, like quarters. quarters right. Right. So the way that we squeeze it into the noodle would be this size. So we squeeze it and the uh, lemon juice will come out and mix it very nice with mm, the noodle. So nice. we put everything on a place like this okay. and it's well, it's cooked. Yeah. But one reminder is that when you prepare the broth, please make sure that you test it to make sure that it's uh, up to the test of the family, whether it's light or whether it's tasty or whether it's salty, it really mm -hmm. depends on your taste. Okay. So uh, the fish sauce, as I mentioned in the recipe, you can put it in the broth. But if you decide that you want to keep the broth for a long time, I wouldn't put the salt, uh, the fish sauce in right away. But whenever I serve, then I will put it mm. uh, on that occasion only okay mm -hmm. right so uh here's the finished uh dish that i have prepared i hope that you enjoy it um and when you are enjoying the noodles and i would like to share with you one way that vietnamese people would um eat the noodles <laughs>
Vietnamese fur, and I would really like to invite uh, my host today to have a try <laughs> and then share with the audience what it's like. Okay, so mm -hmm. should I? Yeah, sure. Use the spoon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can you give us a chopstick? A little bit. Way that <laughs> Your pressure is tough. So I would take some noodles mm -hmm. and some of the meat, maybe. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then do you just? Uh, so the Vietnamese way, we would put some, so first of all, we would mix them together. Oh, to, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yep. And if you like to have sauce or you have to have some herb here, then you put it in. So we take a little bit of the noodles and we put it on here. Oh, on the, on the spoon. On the spoon. Okay. And some of the beef and then with the soup. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a spicy person so that I can't really do the spicy fish sauce, but yes, I'll try that. Mmm. Oh my. That's really good. Yeah, this is this is so much better than what you can get at the restaurant here. <laughs> so much <Thank> better. <laughs> so um, the way that we normally eat the noodle would be in a very normal, just like a, a mediocre mm -hmm. restaurant, a vendor street, and then we eat the noodle, we listen to the music that you have just listened to, mm -hmm. and then we follow up with a cup of Vietnamese uh, coffee, mm. and it's the best start for a day for Vietnamese people. So this is breakfast. Well, we eat noodle for breakfast, for lunch, or for dinner. Yeah, for, for everything. <laughs> so wow. I remember that I used to live with a Greek lady when I was in the UK. And whenever she saw me preparing meat for breakfast, she would ask me, what? Meat for breakfast? What? Mm -hmm. I can't believe it. But then after three, about three months living with me, she started eating meat for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. thanks a lot uh, for inviting me, Tam. Tamara, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. And I, I think, you know, um, I, I was telling Hong, my family's coming by tonight because they love pho as well. And my son-in-law um, is half Thai. And so I know he will love the spicy fish mm -hmm. sauce with his and mine will be a little milder. Um, but yeah, this is this is all lovely. Would for the um, the uh, what uh, do we call these the um, bean, bean sprouts? sprouts. Yep. The bean sprouts they should be fresh as well, not cooked at all in the uh, broth. Or? It, it depends. If you love it to be cooked, then you can dip it in the hot water, like you did with the yeah, onions. like I did with the onions. If mm -hmm. not, then you just put it in uh, and serve it with the noodles. Okay, that's why I prepare two different types of noodles. Yeah. yeah. Oh mm -hmm. boy, it's it's so delicious. I. Um, I, I love all of my the recipes my chefs make, but sometimes there are some that stand out, and this is one of them. So if you have the time to put into making this stock, I know it's a lot of time and effort, but I mean not effort as much, but a lot of time. Um, it's definitely worth it. And and this is once you've had this, I don't know that you would ever go back to a, a restaurant again because it's so delicious. Um, can we freeze the broth? Sure, that is one of uh, the tips that I would like to share with you as well. Uh, you can cook very big portion of the broth 
just remember that you don't put the fish sauce in mm -hmm. and then you put it into a different container and then you put it in the freezer and it could stay alive for months. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to also point out that we even had a little bit of a hard time yesterday finding the beef bones. Um, we went to our local Wegmans here and um, they were in the freezer section. The, mm -hmm. the, the butchers were less than helpful, I would have to say, um, but we, we did eventually find them in the freezer section um, and they're just in a white container with cellophane on top. So they're a little hard to find, but um, hunt those out. And for, for the amount that we made, we used two packages of those. So it was um, eight altogether chunks of beef bone. Um, so four per package. So we had eight and um, it's, it's turned out really, really delicious. And I thought I used way too much ginger, but I think that this turned mm -hmm. out really good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, actually it turns out really good, right? Yeah. That's it's good. delicious. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, thank you so much for coming. And if any of you do try to make this, please send us some photos. Um, we'd love to see your version of the Vietnamese Hanoi book. Yeah, sure. And um, so the video should be up uh, sometime next week, along with information about next month's World Kitchen. So please join us again in June. And thanks for coming. Thank you, everyone. Okay. I have a word, Tambra. I want to uh, congratulate on my friend, uh, wonderful performance today and yeah uh it really reminds me of my hometown and the moments that she uh cooked for me when i were in state college and uh at penn state so i really missed uh my friend my uh vietnamese food um favorite foods for so hopefully you all um enjoy the cooking show and then please come uh and try for uh try to cook for uh according to the video uploaded on the website next week so thank you so much uh hang uh, and tamra for uh bringing vietnamese for to um the international friends um all over the world i really love your show and yeah so and if you if you have time also please look at the uh, previous show that i uh hung and i made on fry spring roll so i i hope that you will love vietnamese foods so mm -hmm. much we are so proud of vietnamese food so thank you so much and congratulations and see you Thank you. Yes, thanks, the, everyone. All of the previous episodes are archived on our website. So if you would like to go back and look at a few months ago when Yun and Hang came, they did the Vietnamese spring rolls. So you can check that out as well. Thank you. All right. Thank so you thanks so much. everyone for being here and uh, for enjoying. I'm not sure whether you enjoy, but for sharing. <laughs> I was a little bit nostalgic <laughs> about my hometown and yeah. our country, so I really hope that I, we can have a chance to see many other upcoming videos. Mm -hmm. And yeah, thanks Thank so you. much. Bye bye. Bye.